Alrighty. Well, this cop has been sitting here for about a good 40 minutes. So I went by twice. I was busy making running errands and stuff. And so as I pull up now to see, you know, if he's okay, I find out it's car number 52. And this time of the day, it should be old man Sleepy. Should be the officer on duty in that car. So, let's go find out if he's okay, if he needs any assistance. He's in an empty parking lot. Just kind of sitting around. Not doing much kind of off the road not really hiding too bad they used to hide behind the Acme now they're kind of sitting on the front there which is okie dokie let's go see if he needs any assistance Not old man sleepy, which is a plus. What's up, buddy? You okay? You need any assistance or anything? Yeah, just uh, there's a jerk filming me, and I would like to uh, have him go someplace else. <laughs> uh, man, I'm doing good. I love you, man. What the hell are you doing? To come in. Yeah, I bet. Seriously, how are you making out tonight? You alright? Okay. You don't have this shift, do you? Yeah. I thought you were more of the uh, morning kind of... After. In the middle. Uh, okay, what time do you get off then? 11. 11, yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Alright, well, you, you stay out of trouble, would you? Well, actually, you see my headlight was out? When I first pulled up, yeah, this headlight was out. So I'm like, well, you know what? Sometimes when you hit bumps, it kind of vibrates loose. So it turned out that was the case, so now they're both working. Then I saw you, and I'm like, ah, oh, boy, I tell you. I tell you. I... <laughs> it's usually where I find you guys. I'm telling you. I, I really do appreciate that. I even commented saying, normally, years ago, you guys used to hide in the back. Now at least you're out front. Presence, that's good. That's what it's all about. So good, good for you guys. Yep, I hear you. Well, hopefully nothing will happen tonight, and you have a quiet night. But uh, how's Officer Kohler doing? Yeah, believe it or not, his father is a friend of mine. Like we went to high school together. That was the hard part. You have friends. That that is the hard part, though. <laughs> That's why I love you, Officer Christian. I'm telling you. Yeah, he was two years ahead of me. Uh, but when I I found out that his son was going to be an officer on our force, I realized I'm getting old as hell. Okay, I'm serious. Time waits for nobody. But uh, good. Well, you stay safe. I gotta. Go visit my son over here and drop the car off. You want to give me a ride home? You harass somebody else? <laughs> now listen, it's not harassment, it's accountability. I don't harass. I like cops that are honest and forthright. It's those crumb bums that make it harder for you guys who are good, who I chastise and go after. So in all honesty, you should be proud and, and that I do you a favor by shaming the bad guys. You know? Because the bad cops that are tyrants and bullies only get good guys like you shot. You know? College? What the hell is college? Yeah. Well, I've been told I should run for city council multiple times and school board member and all that other stuff. And You know, it's, it's so corrupt and so far gone that it's just my job to at least document before I go 
the change from when I was young in the 60s and 70s to what the hell it is today. And, and to hold my officials accountable who I pay, my hard-earned taxes that are stolen from me on a daily basis, I, I at least got to hold somebody accountable. I mean, Christ. My... Well, that's what we're doing now, right. And, and, and we, we have multiple times, you know that. When I realize it's you, I shut it off and we talk and it's fine and you know, I... Again, it's for my protection and yours. Who knows? There's a lot of crazy people out there that, that for some odd reason, will start shooting people for no reason. A lot of them get shot because they're holding the camera. So, you know, a lot of it's protection more than anything else. You know, and, and an honest guy like you should have zero problem with a camera. I, I know it's a pain in the ass when someone shines a camera on you. Believe you me, I understand that. But that's the occupation you chose, you know? Not to be a dick. You know, but that's that's part of the part of the deal. And and for so long, the police have gone unchecked. And it's so hard to even get a a body cam or a car cam from the officers when something happens and you want to use it or see it. So this way, I have my body cam. I have my evidence. It streams live to the cloud. You can break my camera. I'll giggle as you break it. It won't stop what's already up in the cloud. So. You know, and, and why are people so ashamed of their actions? They got a lot to hide. You, you're not afraid of your actions. You're a stand-up guy. Have that, that short little video <laughs> when I call you a hypocrite and you call me an asshole and I call you a dick or something like that. <laughs> and then we're like, okay, have a good day. Yeah, well, I've... I, I realize, you know, you have your seat on? I always, uh, you don't have it on now. I never wear a seatbelt. Isn't that amazing? I see, I'm very good. Yeah, I, got a seat belt I saw you put it on when I pulled around. No, Come on. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Relax. I'm just joking. Yeah, it, you know, again, going from my generation, we didn't have car seats or helmets or I might be you in the back seat and they told you to hold on, you know? I mean, it's, it's nowadays, you know, we've got a nanny state that wants you to buckle up and bubble up and, you know, motorcycles don't have to wear helmets, but I got to wear a seatbelt? You want to talk about hypocrisy. My God. You know, so it's all bullshit. It's all corporate policies there's no more law there's no more order it's all about generating money and and just putting people in this industrial prison complex for like years ago when you did something wrong you did your time or you paid your fine there was no felony that that followed you the rest of your life purposely to tag you like the jews were tagged in germany i mean jesus christ so you get a felony for a stupid drug offense you get out, you can't get hired because nobody wants a felon, and then you gotta fucking eat and survive so you start stealing again, and then you go back into the system, then it all repeats itself again, and again, and again. It's done on purpose. It really is, it's a shame, and as a, as a, a black gentleman, you know, the, the proportion of, the, of the, the, the black people are just railed upon when it comes to the prison system. And, you know, and this is what I'm all about. I don't just bother cops. I go to my fucking township. You see, I went to the uh, the, count, the, the the senator's office. Fucking leech that that weak spine, pussy. Okay, all right. You know, I have to hold these people accountable. I go to the state police. I go to my 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 freaking federal government. You see my videos. I'm down the federal courthouses saying, why can't I film in public areas? How dare you make a policy against my First Amendment right? You know, this is all about exercise your right or you're gonna freaking lose them. So you may think I'm a pain in the ass, and I may be a pain in the ass, but it's not because I want to be a pain in the ass. It's something that it's innate in me and in my heart and in my soul to stand up against shit, okay? Uh, it's not normal, but... <laughs> I should. I should. Uh, tell me about it. I mean, I, as you may know or not know, I've always wanted to run for president my whole life as a little kid. That was my goal so I could change the world. I don't know what it's all about inside me. So I realized that was never going to happen. But in 16, I actually filed all the forms and all the paperwork with the FCC and the FEC and had my name listed as an independent to run for president of the United States. I got votes. 
not nearly enough. You know, and would I be better than Trump? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> so, again, Officer Christian, it's in my heart and soul. It's innate. I can't help it. Okay? I, I, I have always had a problem with authority. A lot of times it was my own fault. You know, when I realized, but as an adult, and I started realizing right and wrong and good and bad and, you know, and, and life how it is, I, I fixed myself, but I'm damn sure going to hold someone else responsible for fucking doing what's wrong. Who holds you responsible for doing what's wrong? Your chief. Okay, but you know, there's a thin blue line. You got police unions. You know, you everything stacked against the citizen. You know, I, it's very hard. You, you have qualified immunity. Unless I can take that away from me with Fields versus the city of Philadelphia. Be careful. Fields versus the city of uh, Philadelphia was passed and... and, and in the Supreme Court and in the District um, um, 7 in this area. And that states that if you knowingly take away someone's civil rights, you lose your qualified immunity. They can sue you in civil court, legally. So, good, bad, or indifferent, that's not what I'm about. Any money I make on YouTube or any lawsuits I, I donate, I, it's not about money. Okay? You, and and uh, I think you should know that by now. You see my last video? When, when the SEPTA bus went off the, off the road, I posted it the other day. Take a look at it. In that video, I state, and I make very proud, that I have you guys as my officers. Okay? When I see good, I post good. I am not about trashing people. I'm about being fair. So again, you guys allowed me to walk into an accident scene that was pretty bad. Injuries, helicopters, ambulances, bus in the fucking ditch, cars smashed up. A lot of places won't allow you in there as free press. You guys did. <laughs> right, me out, huh? <laughs> so again, we should be able to freely document what happens in public spaces. Okay. Now that's wrong. I try to give respect. I try to give plenty of room. I, I, in the beginning, I was pissed at you guys. Believe you me, you took my rights away and the chief fucking hid behind the thin blue line. And that's what set me off. Okay? I wasn't this person with cameras prior to one day I saw three of your cars pull up to a house. I pulled off to the curb, far away, put my camera on my dash. They come knocking on my door. You Joe? I'm like, no, I'm not Joe. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Oh, well, I'll see some ID. I said, well, wait a minute. Am I being detained or under arrest? Because that's the only time I have to show ID. Well, no, no. We just want to, you know, we just want to see who you are, buddy. So real quick, I, I said, no, thanks. Lock my door and roll up my window. What do you want? I want to see some ID. Wow. Am I being detained? Now you're being detained. For what? You have to state, you have to have... You know, probable cause to state why you're detaining me. I fucking, a uh, uh, neighbor banging on my door and marking my car. I opened up my fucking door, I was about to go ballistic. So I opened up my door, they grabbed me, handcuffed me, fucking searched me illegally, pull my fucking ID illegally, and find that I'm not this Joe they were looking for. Turns out, so I go to the police station, file a report, tell the chief, do what's right. I get a letter in the mail, we investigated ourselves and found we did nothing wrong. Gee, shocker. Shocker. <laughs> you had a chance to tase me and didn't. Yes, sir. <laughs> you better investigate those officers for not tasing me. So I, I said to myself, all he had to do is say, Dan, you're right. I'm sorry. We need to retrain some guys. We'll make sure this doesn't happen to other citizens. But none of that. So I said, okay. Well, then I guess I need to be out there monitoring what the fuck goes on. So I told the chief, no, you made this monster. I've told him that 20 times. You made this monster. Okay, if you would have done what's right and what's honest and what's forthright as a professional, you never would have heard of me. But you didn't. So now you're going to hear from me. All right? I, I, I tell you, saw the video with the, uh, the other young um, officer at the fair when he called me racist. Maybe I was a little bit dickish, but what set me off was I said, I'm your boss, so you know what? Just. Uh, you are, 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 you are,
go from there. Okay, but what I did what I get. Right. What gave what got me dickish? Okay? See that's what you gotta look at. What happened was we got on this little tangent of, all right, cool, is your boss here, Tom Nolan, yeah, he's here. I said, you know, by the way, it's kind of funny because I'm actually your boss a little bit too. You know my boss. He was one of those officers. You know my boss. Well, I said, let's go in de facto down the line and see if I am or am not. Who pays your salary? Blah, 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 blah. You know my boss. I said, you're a public servant. So I used the word servant. Oh, boy. You call me, you call me a slave? I said, Jesus Christ. Well, I don't, I'm not racist and I don't use those words. I, see, you're right, a normal person would, but I talk off the cuff because I talk from my heart. Okay, I don't talk to hurt somebody. So if those words come out, they're not meant in spite or in hate, they're meant in just words. But I, I hear you, some people take it wrong. So you saw the whole thing. So what set me off was him saying that I'm not his fucking boss. Fucking right, I'm your boss. I'm your, I'm everybody's boss. Any public official that I pay taxes to, I technically am your fucking boss.